Good morning. The symbol for elastic potential energy is Flippin' Physics. Capital P-E with a subscript of E. Sometimes you will see it instead as a capital U with a subscript of E. However, I prefer P-E for potential energy with a subscript of E for elastic. Elastic potential energy is the energy stored in an object due to the temporary deformation of that object. There are, all sorts of, there are all sorts of examples of elastic potential energy where we store energy in that object due to the temporary deformation of that object, and the most common example is a spring. If we compress the spring, if we make it smaller, elastic potential energy is stored in the spring and can be converted to kinetic and gravitational potential energy. We can also elongate the spring, we can make it longer. Again, elastic potential energy is stored in the spring and can be converted to kinetic and gravitational potential energy. Elastic potential energy isn't only stored in springs. This toy, for example, stores elastic potential energy in this rubber band. And this rubber ball stores elastic potential energy when it strikes the ground. As the ball is compressed, it stores elastic potential energy. That elastic potential energy is then converted to kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy as the ball regains its spherical shape and moves upward. Billy, the equation for elastic potential energy, please. Elastic potential energy equals 1 half kx squared, where k is the spring constant of the spring and usually has dimensions of newtons per meter and x is the displacement from equilibrium position. Sometimes the equilibrium position is called the rest position. How do you guys know all this stuff? We did our homework. Yeah, it helps. Oh. The spring constant is a measurement of how much a spring resists displacement. More specifically, the spring constant is how much force it takes to compress or expand the spring per meter. For example, this weak spring has a small spring constant of about 65 newtons per meter because it takes very little force to compress it. And this strong spring requires a lot more force to compress it because it has a large spring constant of about 3,300 newtons per meter. Now, what do you think about the spring constant of this slinky, Bo? Is this a large or a small spring constant? Well, it looks like it's pretty easy to deform the slinky, so it must have a small spring constant. That is correct, Bo. And what about this pogo stick, Billy? Do you think the spring inside this pogo stick has a large or a small spring constant? Well, when you bounce on the pogo stick, it looks like it, it probably applies a pretty large force to the spring, so that spring must have a large spring constant. That is correct, Billy. Now let's go through an example where we analyze the elastic potential energy stored in this rubber band. Okay, you can see I have the rubber band attached to the force sensor, and if I... Do you mind if I help? Hey there, Mr. Fullerton. Uh, actually, that would be great. Go ahead. Thanks. Let's start with the rubber band at equilibrium, or rest position. This is where the force of the spring, or in this case, the rubber band, is zero. You can see that is where the right end of the rubber band is currently. Who is that? That is Mr. Fullerton of aplusphysics.com. You were in one of his videos. As Mr. P pulls the rubber band to the right, the displacement from equilibrium position, or x, increases, and the force caused by the spring increases linearly, which you can see in the graph. The slope of the line which describes this data is the spring constant of the rubber band. For this rubber band, the slope of the line, and therefore the spring constant, is 241 newtons per meter. Wait, have you discussed Hooke's law yet? Can I even say all that? Uh, no. Actually, we haven't yet defined the force of a spring or Hooke's law, uh, so let's not do that. Why don't you just give us the spring constant, please? Okay, never mind about the graph. Let's just say I took measurements to get the spring constant of the rubber band, which is 241 newtons per meter. I feel like I just learned something I wasn't supposed to yet. Yeah. 
Let's determine the elastic potential energy stored in the rubber band when it is elongated by 12 centimeters, or 0.12 meters. Actually, Bobby, would you mind doing that for us? Sure. Thanks. Well, elastic potential energy is one half the spring constant times the displacement from equilibrium position squared, so it equals one half times 241 times 0.12 squared, uh, which is 1.7352 or 1.7 with two significant digits. But uh, what are the units? Joules. I bet we have to actually determine the units. Yes, absolutely. Jinx, Jinx. you owe me a soda. soda. Yeah, okay. Um, well, the spring constant is in newtons per meter, which is multiplied by meters squared. Um, Meters cancel out and we are left with Newton meters, which is joules. So the energy stored in the spring is 1.7 joules. I do need to write stuff on the board now, so I do need to let go of the force sensor. So thank you very much for your help, Mr. Fullerton. You're very welcome. My pleasure. Anytime. I want my two dolls. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Make it a great day. Did anyone else find that floating head disturbing? No, nope. Bo, considering the spring constant cannot be negative, can you have negative elastic potential energy? The displacement from rest position can be negative. However, it is squared. So no, you cannot have negative elastic potential energy. Thank you, Mr. Fullerton of A Plus Physics for your help today and for... Oh, hold up. I'm sorry. I totally forgot to mention that, like kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy, elastic potential energy is a scalar. But now I did just mention it, so never mind about that apology. Sorry. Wait. No. <laughs> Bye. Thank you for learning with me today. I enjoyed learning with you.